Welcome back to our family's boat shop, everyone. My name is Joe Buskins. I'm a full-time fishing guide with a 100-ton captain's license. This is our boat that we run charters in during the summer. I'm also a second-generation Coast Guard license professional boat builder. This is part two of our uh, how to seal and work on fiberglass. And this is a little component, so hopefully you guys caught the first part of this. It was fairly long, but it dealt, dealt mostly with how to fiberglass and seal like a stringer section or a bulkhead section with PVC pipe. So what we're doing now is we're going into part two and we're dealing with some different sealants and fasteners and an assortment of cool things that we found that work really, really good in our family shop. So cleaning up this fiberglass is something you guys have seen me do uh, if you've been following the channel. And if you're new to the channel, we've got over 150 episodes everything from fishing in this boat to how we built this boat and lately a whole bunch of diy type uh work and you guys seem to really be enjoying that so thank you guys for tuning back in and following uh, you guys feel free to comment if you want to see something other than what we're doing we've been having a lot of really nice comments and suggestions here lately but what we're going to do is uh we're going to clean up where we fiberglassed last you can see that's some pvc pipe that we put in there and uh, you got some ragged edges best way to clean them up with a vacuum or a little 3m pad and some 40 grit now obviously you could use a big grinder or a or a da there but let's just keep it simple this will keep the dust minimal we're just basically going to go in there nothing too complicated you see again that's in real time not a lot to it sometimes just a little block and sandpaper is the way to go anybody can afford something like that now obviously if you wanted to use a DA, you certainly could. You would need an air compressor, air hose, and the actual tool itself. But, you certainly could come in there. I like to kind of bevel that edge back a little bit personally. Yeah, we've kind of sanded the face of it. Oh, God. That looks beautiful. So I always try to show you guys different versions and options of doing things there's a always almost always more than one way to get a quality result now obviously if you, this were an actual part in a boat you would go ahead and do all the other connections and you may do some sanding and whatnot and you guys can look elsewhere on the channel and see some videos relating to that but what i thought we would do is go ahead and jump into some other options um, in the thumbnail, you guys are seeing us hold some different marine sealants. And here in the U.S., and I'm imagining they're going to be overseas, 5200 and 4200, when it comes to bolt holes, um, this would be pretty typical of bolting an outboard motor or a heavy component. Now, 5200 is incredibly popular, and it is very, very good, but it is a permanent adhesive it is removable but it takes a lot of effort to take a part loose if you got something like outboard motors or bronze through hull fittings i would recommend the 4200 and if you look here this is somewhere between permanent and removable you can see that little dot that's filled in there now this is also going to be a fast cure 5200 itself takes several days for it to start to firm up 4200 it's pretty darn quick um you got cure in 24 hours on that one so that is what we actually used when we put 
all of our bronze through holes in our 29 footer over there. And that can work really, really good for sealing around a fitting like this, such as this. But this stuff, like everything in the marine world, is not cheap. Um, we're looking at about 28 bucks here. And both of these are about the same price. So what I wanted to do though, is show you guys how we would install this. But instead of using the 5200, I'm just gonna use a little bit of 3M, that is a marine grade silicone sealant. Now, for example, like in our 29 footer here, um, when we installed the motors, we replace motors pretty regularly. And I tend to use silicone, especially in a CUSA transom. CUSA obviously won't soak water. Wood can soak water. So I prefer to use the silicone. A little bit easier to pull the motors off when we're getting ready to replace them versus if you're running the 4200 or 5200. Now, I'm gonna show you guys a little hack. If you have used 5200 or 4200 and you've got something that's gotta be removed, there is actually a product called D-Bond. That is D-Bond Marine Formula. Very thin, almost like a paint thinner or acetone, an aerosol can. You can spray it on a part that's been bonded with either of those materials. Give it a little soak time and it'll actually break the bond of those materials and you can get stuff loose. Because if you've never tried to take something apart that's been glued with 5200, you're pretty much gonna tear stuff up. It'll pull gel coat off a surface and fiberglass loose. So that is a amazing um, product, the D-Bond. That is something, and I'll try to put a link, link to that down below. But what we've got here is we've got, obviously we got this bolt running through and you guys can see that I had started the process of masking this. Generally, I find it's easier to go ahead and tear a few small pieces and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and complete the job of masking this off for you guys and I want to just show you folks how we would do an install and then we got some other little cool solutions to problems when you're mounting hardware like down in a bilge or in a stringer. Now a lot of stuff in boat is exposed to moisture but it may not be submerged and things that are submerged are gonna be treated a little bit differently, but most of the stuff we're dealing with here would be like in the bilge or on the transom. And there again, I know I may have pointed this out earlier, but you can see we've got a little border there. And we've got the other side done already. You know, prep is key. And a lot of times when we're working here in the boat shop, we do a lot of what we call dry fitting. Um, get everything out, get all the holes drilled, mock everything up. I'm go ahead and bolt it in place, run the bolts through the holes, make sure they fit, make sure there's some tolerance there and everything's gonna work right. And that way, when you get ready for the actual install uh, and you've, uh, you have opened up a, a tube of the 5200 or 4200, you're not scrambling around and, and there's a lot of confusion. So now what we're gonna do, we are gonna take that bolt out obviously and we've got everything staged and ready now personally kind of the same as when we're installing these i kind of like to butter butter the uh the threads up a bit again typically we use we use a caulking gun for this kind of stuff but occasionally you just need a little bit There we go. Caulking gun works better in my opinion if you're doing a bigger job, but there's times when you just don't wanna buy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tool that onto the threads a bit. I'm gonna load it a little bit heavy on the front, front end here. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get some of that, some of that sealant worked and a lot of times what we'll do is we will kind of work our way in. As it gets closer, you see the need, you can also add a little more and turn the fastener to kind of load that up 
And what we want, we'll come on over here so you can see it's starting to work its way out. We're getting close. I'm gonna go ahead. Now I did not put any resin in this hole that we drilled here, but a lot of times you would, and the tolerances might be a little bit tighter. But as we get close, sometimes I will move that bolt back and forth and make sure that we've got some, we want excess material. I'm gonna put a little more in there. I won't squeeze out. When you're, when you're doing this, it's okay for there to be a little excess material. The sealant is relatively cheap compared to the cost of the overall job. And again, a caulking gun is gonna do a little better job. That should get us where we want, but you want plenty on there. Don't, don't skimp on the sealant. I'm gonna run that in there nice and tight. There is a little bit of silicone sealant on the threads there, and that'll happen sometimes even with the 5200. Working with gloves is not a bad idea. Now, I'm not gonna tighten that down crazy tight, but you can actually, maybe my cameraman can zoom in there, and you can see that there is some squeeze out around that. Actually, we're gonna tool that with our finger, and you can see we're getting just a little bit. It's okay. If there's even more than that, sometimes I will actually even come back and re-place that like around the bolt head. I wanna go ahead and tool that a touch. Shop towels and gloves are your friends for sure. Same deal here on the back side. All right. And the tape, as you guys can see, minimizes contamination of areas around the part. I'm actually gonna come over here and cinch that up for you guys. Now, another thing, when you're dealing with fasteners, especially with plywood, you want to be mindful or careful. You want it to stay put, but you do not want to, what we call just torque down on that thing to the point where you hear fibers cracking and you're actually damaging, damaging the core itself. After I've tightened that, I'm gonna come in and tool it a little bit more with the gloves. Very good. Now, we can reach in there and we can pull the masking. And as you guys can imagine, it's really nice and neat. That is the way to do it without a bunch of mess. Um, definitely helps to prep that surface. Tape is for sure your friend. Now, the same deal, um, I want to show you guys another product <laughs> that is really, really good stuff. If you haven't used it, you're probably going to use it at some point. And I know that we've dealt with a whole bunch of uh, polyester type products, but this is actually an epoxy. And there's a place for epoxy for sure in a boat. There's a lot of times when you want to bond something and it is pretty hard to beat epoxy for bonding. And what we've got is you can see there are two components. There's an A and a B. And these things come with a really unique little mixing tip there that as you squeeze this through the cartridge, it mixes the two components together. And what we're gonna be using that for this little piece right there 
is called a weld mount. And that is an awesome little deal. Now, the 610 takes a, a minute or two, more than five minutes to cure, actually. But what you can do is you can use even like a five minute, like a JB weld would work perfect, especially if you were in a hurry. These little jokers, you can mount them right on a stringer and you can run your cables and whatnot through and then just cinch down just like so. And you're not even having to drill a hole through your stringer. But I do want to demonstrate for you guys, just so y'all can see, you can actually see the components coming down the nozzle. This stuff is amazing. It's like a gel, if you will. This little pad here has got these little grippers on the bottom. You can set that down in place. And tool that just a little bit. You give that, oh, well, five minutes if you're using the, the JB Weld five minute epoxy. Of course, you can use the 610 for that and it's good for other things too. The 610 is amazing for fillets and whatnot. You can also use this if you wanted to. You could come in and you can put pieces of PVC as chases or conduits and you're not even having to drill a hole in the stringer. You could put an adhesive down, bed that piece of PVC in there and then use that as a run or as a chase. Now, we're moving right along. I'm trying to give you guys a lot of options here just to show you that there's more than one way to do any job. Now, you may go to the Marine Hardware store and let's just say you wanna route some little cables next to the stringer. And uh, for one reason or the other, you decide you need some little looms. Now, these have been around for a long time, just your little inexpensive plastic looms, but they tend to break, they move around, they compress. I don't really love them. What we used on our boat are these, they're uh, rubberized with stainless steel and they work really, really nice. But the same deal, whether you're gonna be using like 5200 or a silicone sealant, we have pre-drilled our holes. Get a good dollop of the silicone sealant on there. And if you can, we always try to mount anything we're gonna drill holes, anytime we're gonna drill holes in the boat, if we can mount it high out of the bilge, try to minimize contact with it just sitting in the water, which seems obvious, but lots of components in a boat, even though the boat is sitting in the water, a lot of the interior components, they dry for the most part. You know, they get, they get splashes periodically, but they're not immersed in water all the time. And it's just a good idea to mount stuff as high as possible same deal, I'm putting plenty of sealant over that screw hole. And of course, I'm sure some of you folks out there have some, some suggestions and have some different ways of doing things. These are just some of the more common ways. We're gonna take that stainless screw and run right down through. Now it is important to note as far as sealants go, silicone, Sealant actually does a really good job in a lot of applications. On something like this, you could use silicone sealant or you certainly could use 4200, 5200. I mean, I, I probably would not put epoxy on there because if you did ever want to remove it, the epoxy is really gonna bond that. I'm gonna tool that just a bit. Now, obviously you could have done with these the same as we did with the bolts here and you could have taped them off and kept it really neat. Sometimes, you know, life happens. Sometimes you can do that. Sometimes you can't. But um, that is a, a handful of suggestions there. Now, obviously, going back to the PVC pipe that we ran through, you could certainly come back and once we've sanded everything, you guys can go back 
in the channel and see how we gel coat, how we gel coated this part. And it would be basically the same idea. I would just lightly scuff all these surfaces, textured a little bit. And this part is meant to replicate that something down in the bilge, kind of in the interior of the boat. I have been getting a lot of requests for some finished gel coat, and I kind of have that in the plans. And I also plan on doing another version of this using epoxy instead of polyester. And I'm gonna try to replicate more of a stringer running into a transom to show you guys some of the more complex fiberglass methods we may use. So there may be something I'm leaving out. I hope not, but I plan on doing a bunch of these videos and I will add it in a future video if we have something I think is of interest to you guys. So I hope y'all enjoyed part two. If you didn't see part one, back up and you can see us fiberglass in it. It's Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters, Fish Bump TV on YouTube, my cameraman Logan there behind the GoPro. And as always, we'll catch you guys next time out.